Okay guys, so today we're going to be looking at the Famicom Classic Mini. It's the Japanese version of the NES Classic Edition. Comes with two controllers in the unit. Looks pretty spiffy. This is definitely going to be an option for those who could not get the US or the European released version. This version is still going for quite a bit less than what the other ones are going for, so it's a viable option if you have to have an official product. A lot of cool box art on here. Shows all the games. Pretty cool stuff. Kind of, it replicates the original box that the, uh, the Famicom was released in. But let's go ahead and open up this bad boy and take a look at what we got inside. So getting her on out, same size box as the US and European version, but the contents are going to vary. So we don't get the poster that we get in the US version. We get a lot of stuff that's in Japanese. I'm not even going to bother going through it because the My Nintendo codes cannot be used here. But opening her up, we do have two controllers that are attached to the console, which replicates the original system. So that could be an issue. You cannot detach these or replace them or use the American versions or European version release controllers because they are hardwired into the system. So looking at these controllers, the cord length is going to be about the same. It's a couple feet, like two and a half feet, but the controllers are tiny. They're kept in proportion to the system, which I find really neat that they did that, but it's going to be a little different playing on them. Second player does have the fake microphone that was on the original, but it's not usable, obviously. The buttons do feel really good, it's just, you know, the controllers are small. They're made proportion to the system versus being the same size as the original release. So getting this box open, in the bottom, we will have our USB cable for power and an HDMI cable. We do not get the brick for the USB cable. You will have to use your own or buy an extra one, but any cell phone charger or plug it into your TV will work. So, looking at this little guy, pretty nifty. But let's go ahead and compare this little fella to our US counterpart, the NES Classic Edition that was released here in the US. That's the same version that was released in Europe as well. So looking at the size, pretty similar in size. The main difference you're gonna see is the controller. The little baby controller. Still very usable, but just looking at it, it's a baby. Little, little kid hands could use this. But we will be checking that out in a moment to see how it feels. So yeah, the size, very comparable. We do have our reset and our power switch on the front of the Famicom Mini, pretty nifty. Just like our US counterpart. All sticking to the original design. And these controllers, they do sit in the sides. There's a space for them where they just kinda rest in there, which is really neat. But with these being attached and you not being able to extend the cables, you're going to have to sit pretty close to them versus our US version, we could get extensions. So let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in, check her out, see how the controls work, take a closer look. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is my first boot up of the Famicom Mini system. And looking at her, you know, the, the theme is pretty much the same as the NES Classic, the US and European version, but our set of games are gonna be different, obviously. And I'll go over that list real quick. I'm not gonna be familiar with the pictures on everything, but I do have the list. So we have Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Excite Bike, Balloon Fight, Ice Climber, Galaga, Yi R Kung Fu, Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Atlantis No Nazo, Gradius, Makai Village, which is Ghosts and Goblins in the US, Solomon's Key, Metroid, Castlevania, Adventure of Link, Bumping Sumo, which is a pretty fun game, Super Mario Bros. 3, Ninja Gaiden, 
Mega Man 2, River City Ransom, Double Dragon 2, Super Tamashito Luo, which is Super C in the US, Final Fantasy 3, Dr. Mario, Downtown, Niketsu March Soryuki, Mario Open Golf, and Super Mario USA, which is Super Mario Brothers 2 in the US, and then finally Kirby's Adventure. So a lot of the games are similar to what was on the US version. A handful of the games are different. Like we did not get Final Fantasy 3, we did not get River City Ransom, and a couple other Japanese exclusive games. But overall, if you were to get this system as you know, a substitution to getting the US or European release, most of these games are very playable without the English language anyway, as most of them don't really use text in any form to really progress the game for the most part. Handful of games, yes, you'll have a difficulty. Final Fantasy III, for example, would be one of them. If you don't understand Japanese, you're not gonna be able to fully enjoy the game. You probably won't even be able to play it for the most part. But with that said, the great thing is, is that we all know the US and European version of the system is easily hacked. You can add games, you can remove games, you can change the artwork, all that, all that wonderful stuff. With the same program, you can do the same thing with the Famicom Mini. So if you really wanted to have the official product and the Famicom Mini was gonna suit your needs, you could change all these games out for the English counterparts. And that would be great. And you can have the English language box art on here as well. The big thing that I did notice besides, you know, it has the red font, you know, the red color and the gold font, you know, which is different than the versions we received. The big difference that I noticed is the box art is inconsistent on the, the Famicom Mini. Some of them, you know, the shapes are different. So that's one thing that, that jumped out at me that I noticed is that the artwork as far as the box art is a little inconsistent, which is not a big deal. I guess that's just the way it was. You know, in the US and European version, the box art's all the same size. It looks really neat. So you could really, you know, go through and fix all that and change it to the US box art, change the games to the US release. Keep, you know, if there were certain Japanese titles you wanted to keep, you could keep those. The Hackchi program is very easy to use, pretty foolproof. I've done a video on it, many others have done it. Simple Google search will get you the program and usually a, a nice set of games, you know, a complete set of games with the, uh, the artwork and everything included. A short little process to transfer everything over. Like I said, pretty, pretty foolproof, easily done. Um, and definitely with this system being under $100, anywhere between 80 to maybe 95 bucks, you know, found on Amazon. I'll put the link in my description if you want to grab one from Amazon. Definitely a, a viable option instead of paying these outrageous scalpers, you know, hundreds of dollars for the US or European release. You know, this, this system, I've had the Famicom Mini since it was released. You know, I did not pay a premium for it. But the point that we are at now, it's going to be impossible to get any of these systems without paying a premium. So if you're not somebody who wants to jump into the Raspberry Pi community and jump into RetroPie or Recall Box and you got to have the official system, I can't knock you for it. Some people might argue, "Hey, don't even get that. Get a Raspberry Pi instead." I'm I'm in the middle. I'm neutral on that. I love having the official products and I do love having the Raspberry Pi as well. I have the US release you know, Nintendo Classic. I have the Japanese release version. I also have the European release version. I did not pay a premium for any of them because I got all of them on release. And I'm, you know, somewhat of a collector. I love Nintendo, so I had to have these systems despite already having all these games. Just something really neat to have and play with. So I enjoy it, and I know a lot of other people do too, so I don't feel it is fair to knock anybody that wants to buy one of these, even if you want to buy the US release version for a premium, if you have the money to spend and it's not going to hurt you, hey, you know, if that's where you have to go and do it, you know, more power to you. Pay the premium if you want. I just wanted to put this out there that, hey, this is essentially the same system, just shaped a little different, has Japanese games on it. You can change that to English pretty easily. There's going to be some differences, obviously. And the main difference that I wanted to touch on 
is that awesomely, it comes with two controllers. The US and European version came with one. Now the downside to that, like you saw in the unboxing, is that these controllers are baby sized controllers. These are little fellas. These are gonna be really small, but I'm gonna go ahead and start a game up. Don't even know what game this is. Mystery Adventure Start, let's do this. I'm just gonna see how this controller feels. I've been kind of holding it in my hand already. So the way I'm doing it, and it's, it, it feels all right. You know, I'm, it's not uncomfortable, but I have the left side of the controller laying in my left hand with my thumb on the D-pad. And then the right side controller, I have my index finger resting on the top with my thumb, you know, pressing the A or B buttons. So it doesn't feel too bad. I really wish the controllers were bigger. I understand why they did it this way, but ultimately that might be a reason you don't want this system. But I'm here to tell you, it's not bothering me as much as I thought it would. The games are still very playable. The D-pad and the buttons are very responsive. No issue with that. I'm really digging it. Like I said, I wish it, the controllers were normal size, you know, but with the aesthetic and how they wanted it to look, I understand it, you know, putting the controllers into the side of the system, just like the original version. It's really cool, looks really nice that way, but that might, you know, persuade you not to get this system. But like I said, I wanted to show this. I wanted to let you guys peep it out and see that, hey, you can still get this version of the system for a bit more of a reasonable price than you can for the other versions and just give you guys some options to look at. That's what a lot of my videos have been lately is like, hey, these are the options we have out there for our retro gaming needs. Pick and choose, you know, decide what you, what you like, what you don't like. I'm just here to show you what, what the pros and cons can be and just ultimately give you some information to help you decide. So with that said, hope you guys appreciate the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you can, please smash that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Boom!